Sega. Hello and welcome to the Empires of Sand Culture Pack Feature Spotlight for Total War Attila. For this spotlight, we're going to be taking a look at some of the new features and units unique to the Empires of Sand Culture Pack. The Empires of Sand Culture Pack brings three new playable factions to Total War Attila, Axum, Himyar and the Tanakids. These factions are part of the new Desert Kingdoms Cultural Group and bring new campaign mechanics, new horde gameplay mechanics, events, enhanced religion features and unique units to the Grand Campaign. The Kingdom of Axum, located on the coast of Africa, owe their power to excellent trade routes, a fact reflected in their gameplay and traits. Axum's unique event chain challenges you to claim a series of resources in exchange for unlocking new spice buildings and Gupta Indian influence units such as the Spice Warriors and Spice Guard. Naturally, all manner of things were adopted and adapted by those who guarded their sections of the trade routes, including a variety of military equipment and the knowledge needed to use it to best advantage. Two such weapons are the Kanda, the famous six sword wielded by the Spice Warriors, and the Fenestrated Axe, wielded by the Spice Guard, which both came to the Arabian and Southern African kingdoms via their trade connections with India. Himyar is a powerful Arabian kingdom on the peninsula. The Himyarites survive in their arid lands through a series of specialized adaptations to the desert, the most prominent of which is the Marib Dam, a unique fertility boosting building in the faction capital. The Marib Dam is one of, if not the oldest dam in the world. First constructed to catch rainwater during the monsoon season to irrigate crops, the dam was modified in height and breadth over many centuries. However, these constant amendments weaken the structure, leading to more frequent breaches that require attention and gold to repair on each subsequent occasion. Hardy and weathered, Himyar forces are drilled to feats of great stamina. Their roster is built around a series of tanking defensive units to represent their desert hardiness. An example of this can be found in the very heavy defensive axe unit, the Zafar Sentinels. Named after the mountain fortress city Zafar, the Zafar Sentinels guard the capital with their lives. There is evidence that Zafar was besieged by the Aksumites in the 3rd century AD, but successfully defended itself against the African invaders. The fortress palace at the top of the city, known as the Raiden Palace, still stands to this day. The Tanakids have travelled a long way from their origins to search for a home amidst a volatile land. After migrating north, they recently rebelled against Rome following Emperor Verlaine's attempt to convert them from Orthodox to Aryan Christianity. The Tanakids defeated the Romans in the field on several occasions and forced the agreement to their terms. As a result, the Tanakids represent a desert rebellion with a hyper-aggressive playstyle, plus a host of unique traits and features. Unlike other hordes, the Tanakids obtain food through fighting settlement battles rather than from buildings. Not only that, but winning battles spreads fame and swells their ranks, increasing the horde's growth. The Tanakids are extremely difficult to stamp out also. Tanakid armies in raiding stance gain a free rebellion militia unit every turn, with no upkeep cost, so the longer they're left to roam free plundering, the more men join their cause. When they decide to finally settle, a unique event chain enables them to absorb all their allies that they have liberated into a large empire of the east. Because of the dramatic impact religious changes had on these cultures in this period, the Empires of Sand Culture Pack includes a number of changes that increase the importance of religion, including building chains, victory conditions, events, technologies, and overall campaign bonuses. Each non-Horde Desert Kingdoms faction has two main religions to choose between. Axum may follow Eastern Christianity and Semitic Paganism, while Himyar may choose between Judaism and Semitic Paganism. Axum and Himyar have two new Tier 5 barracks available, one for each religion. These barracks buildings each provide three unique elite units as well as unlocking a variety of campaign benefits. By choosing Semitic Paganism, Himyar gain access to the Adobe of Shams Champions building, granting them access to the units Athar's Chosen, Zodiac Archers, and Almaka's Lancers. Alternatively, sticking with Judaism allows Himyar to build a dwelling of the Kayalim, providing access to the units Kayalim, Sanagorim, and Zealot Archers. 
Axum can also choose Semitic Paganism, again allowing construction of the Adobe of Sham's Champion, but giving them access to the Afar Raid Masters, Behar's Chosen, and Sons of the Invincible Mahrem. Sticking to Eastern Christianity, however, will grant Axum access to the House of the Hagia Makatas, allowing recruitment of Abuna's Guard, Bet George's Cavalry, and Mascal Spearmen. The Tanakid roster focuses on battlefield area control and micromanagement. Light but powerful shock cavalry such as the Sandstorm Lancers are paired with stealth units such as the Tanakid Ambushers and fast pike units, the Tanakid Pikes. The Empires of Sand Culture Pack features over 50 completely new and unique units, so we've only just scratched the surface of what's available. We hope you've enjoyed this feature spotlight. Subscribe to our YouTube for more exclusive Total War videos.